and Select Committee. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Call Jamie Lee Ross. Mr. Speaker, I am very pleased to stand in support of this bail amendment bill. It's uh, another day where the national-led government is bringing to the House another piece of legislation to uh, clamp down on crime, to do what we can to put victims at the heart of the justice system, and for New Zealanders, they'll see this government as bringing another bill to the House which will assist them to remain safe in their homes and on the streets. We make no shame. We have no shame in saying that we support victims. We have no shame in saying that we think that the uh, justice system needs to be moved further towards the rights of victims and away from the rights of those who commit crimes. We're proud to say that we passed 18 new laws in the last parliament uh, to clamp down on crime, to get tougher in the law and order area. I'm particularly pleased to say, Mr Speaker, that through changes this government's brought through, uh, my community, my area of counties, Manukau, is much safer due to the 300 police officers that were brought onto the streets of counties Manukau. 600 were brought onto the streets nationwide and counties Manukau is a safer area because of it. Today, Mr Speaker, we're looking at making some changes to bail and I'm looking forward to this bill going through to the Law and Order Select Committee where we can consider it further. Mr Speaker, the prime uh, area that's been uh, touched on and is in the bill is the issue of bail and reversing the burden of proof. In most cases at the moment, if the prosecution opposes bail, then it must prove that the defendant poses a risk of absconding, interfering with witnesses or evidence, or offending on bail. In these cases, the burden of proof lies with the prosecution. We want to change that. The current uh, bill that we've got before the House uh, sorry, the current Act that is in place at the moment imposes a reverse burden of proof on defendants charged with a specified series of sexual or violent offences when they have a previous conviction for one of those offences. This reverse burden of proof means that in order to be granted bail, the defendant has to demonstrate that they do not pose a risk to the public or to their trial. This makes it harder in marginal cases for those defendants to get bail and more likely that they will be held in custody on remand until trial. Mr Speaker, we are wanting to extend uh, that reverse burden of proof to a number of other crimes. The bill will reverse the burden of proof and bail decisions for those charged with serious Class A drug offences, such as manufacturing or dealing P. Now, I've got the Minister of Customs sitting in front of me. He's extolled the, uh, to the House the problems of uh, P. Uh, in the community, and anything we can do to get tougher on those who are involved in the pea business is a welcome move. I also note that uh, Mike Saban is in the House today. Those in Northland know of the great work that he's done in the community dealing with pea and helping those who have struggled with pea. Mr Speaker, uh, as more than a third of defendants arrested for serious Class A drug offences offend whilst on bail, it's good that we're making change in the changes in this area to include those types of offences uh, in the reverse burden of proof regime. The reverse burden of proof and bail decisions for defendants charged with murder will also be changing. Murder is the most serious offence in New Zealand law, but it currently is subject to the same test for bail as other less serious offences. We're going to change that as well to reflect the seriousness of the charge. Mr Speaker, there's been a few comments this afternoon about whether this will actually stop people uh, from, from we'll, we'll give them uh, a reason to not uh, offend on bail because the uh, bail changes uh, are coming through this bill. Mr Speaker, I'm quite aware of a situation we had in South Auckland a few years ago where a bottle shop owner, an Indian bottle shop owner was murdered in his bottle shop. Uh, there were six uh, offenders in the case, some of which were later convicted of murder. One of the offenders who was actually convicted of aggravated robbery uh, was found to have offended whilst on bail. He obtained firearms, he stole cars and he led the police through a high-speed chase through South Auckland. He did all that whilst he was on bail. He received an extra nine months in prison for those additional offences. 
I raise this because it's, it highlights an example where there are people, real examples, that communities around New Zealand, in this case the South Auckland community, real examples where people can highlight the fact that there are offenders out there who offend whilst on bail and we should make it more difficult for them to do that. <laughs> Mr Speaker, yeah. uh, the statistics show that the percentage of defendants Thanks. that offend on okay. bail increased from 15.7% in 2004 to 18.4%. That's going in absolutely uh, the wrong direction. Overall, an average of 17.4% of defendants charged with an offence between 2004 and 2009 that spent time on bail were convicted of committing an offence on bail. We need to make changes in this area. This bill does this. This is a continuation of National's desire to rebalance the justice system more in favour of victims, make sure that there are appropriate uh, punishments for those who commit problems uh, in the community, and I'm looking forward to this being considered further by the Select Committee. I call Dennis O'Rourke.